And I want to hand over to our first speaker. Um, so uh, Huay Lin Nguyen is Prevention Coordinator of the Partnership for Health Advancement in Vietnam. And the session will be entitled Promoting Patient-Centered HIV Services with Community Advisory Boards in Vietnam. So over to you, Lin. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Lin from Hai Vien. Today, I'm very pleased to give you a brief introduction on promoting people-centered HIV services with community advisory board. From now on, we cook up in Vietnam. As you may know, the goal of community engagement are to build trust, enlist new resources and align, create better communication and improve overall health outcomes. So that in the 69 One Health Assembly, community empowerment become the first strategy. It was also mentioned partly in the third and the fifth strategy. Over the last two decades, research and practice in health promotion so that meaningful community engagement is critical to decrease HIV stigma and discrimination as well as promote people-centered health services. From legal point of view in Vietnam, in Directive number 10 issued by Ministry of Health in 2017, client engagement to health service delivery were emphasized as a key component. CAP is a model adapted from New York State HIV Quality of Care Program to create a win-win situation in which both service provider and service user say the responsibility for service quality focus on client needs. Service provider definitely need their client input to build health system with direction to respond well with client's expectation. On the other hand, clients are happy to provide inputs. They are always willing to network with others involved to solution discussion and aim to the goal of service quality improvement. So now we will explore what a CAP is. It serves as a bridge between health provider and client to address service delivery issue in real time. Its goal is to provide recommendations to the health facility on area of improvement, to educate community and to work as part of facility QI team to drive changes and improvement. CAP plays the role of a bridge between healthcare staff and community. For community, CAP aims to first connect and engage community and client in the quality improvement and joy solution. Second, advocate for community involvement to own decision-making process in health programming and health initiative. For health system, CAP collaborate with health staff to implement quality improvement together. They help to circulate information on available services and report back to the community about the improvement based on their input. CAP in Vietnam are located at the provincial level and are endorsed by the provincial CDC or provincial department of health. First CAP established in 2019 under provincial S committee. For the others, they were under higher level department of health so that they have larger working coverage. As you see in the picture, they are the first CAP in Vietnam. In this slide, I would like to tell you about the recruitment process. It is beginning to give the recruitment information to a key population with call KP who have got healthcare services in facility. Though interested in this work, fill out the CAP application form. Before they become official member, 
CDC staff and chair of CAP meet them for confirming about the CAP DOR, including goal, function, activity, and so on. The CAP members are representative from people living with HIV, their family member, men have sex with men, transgender people, sex worker, people who use drugs, or sexual partner of KP groups. Each CAP include from 10 to 20 members with diversification of gender as KP group uh, with at least five members nominated by community. This chart will uh, explain very detailed how CAP work to empower community and co-design the joint action plan. First, community voice here are collected from four key pillars here. Um, on the left. Uh, through client feedback by um, hotline or comment box, exist interview to client at facility, community dialogue with active CBO and KP network, and uh, community score cap. We call softly CSC. I will talk more about CSC in another slide later. For the right part here, yeah, um, through various feedback, and dialogue mechanism with health system. CAP use collected information and data to co-design action plan and responses. They also say responsibility with healthcare workers to implement improvement to promote client center services, especially in education and communication with client and community. Each CAP collected from 100 to 250 feedback per month. After two year implementation, we have seen substantial improvement in service quality due to efforts of CAP. At one side, on health staff are multitask person. So they offer OPC only two days per week. That means waiting time of ARV client was very long. After receiving comments, CAP have a discussion with and advocated the facility. Then the facility agreed to save three days per week for ARV client. Second, before CAP, all OPC called client's name on loudspeaker. And of course, client were not happy in terms of confidentiality. With CAP feedback, the system changed at on site within a province. Instead, they call client by ID number. Through individual counseling or group discussion with client regularly, CAP also had to increase percentage of client who know their viral loss result. You can see on the charts um, here of exist interview in one province. Uh, this, this indicator increased from 70% uh, to 91% in three rounds of assessment and after one and a half year. Besides, CAP contributed to some other results, such as advocacy for quality increase of bread drug delivery or introduction of other treatment therapy, TB, STI, HCV to community widely. CSC is a very uh, key component that led and uh, facilitated by CAP. Uh, it is a two-way participatory community-led QI tool routinely used for assessment, planning, monitoring, and evaluation of health services. The CSC cycle is implemented quarterly and includes four main steps. Firstly, client uh, with community representative and health providers separately score the indicator on a scale of one to 10, poorest quality to best quality. Set of indicator were identified by community representative and input from health provider before. 50 standard indicator apply for on-site cover sick area, HIV prevention, counseling and testing, care and treatment, facility, policy and procedure, and our own satisfaction. 
Some additional indicators are also tailored to provincial and site context. In the second and the third step, the two groups together discuss an agreed score for each indicator, provide qualitative data, and make a joint action plan for improving the lowest score. This plan focuses on site intervention and provincial buy in. The groups then implement the action plan together. A dashboard is updated after each round to interview to review chain for each indicator over time. Of course, CAP is a key member of MNE team. As the initial result, CSC made prevention commodity more available and accessible. Before CSC meeting, distribution of prevention commodity or to our channel, but not provided to facility themselves. Through the scoring process, clients need for prevention commodity were recognized. The facility and CAP together advocated for resort reallocation to provincial health leadership. As the result, commodity and informational Material on KP led services were made available in facility. This chart, you see here, yeah. so the score changed drastically from one to 10 for all commodity by the third round. Friendly services are the key CSC accomplishment. Clients comfort increase from four, from four to nine due to infrastructure improvement, which were advocated by CAP time by time. Intake and examination procedure also substantially improved from a score of three by reducing waiting time. Now clients are serviced in order of arrival. Additionally, CAP supported facility to establish online support channel through Facebook fan page so client can contact with healthcare staff directly and get supported easier. To promote privacy, one side created private room for individual counseling section. Client have close space to discuss and say their personal problem, their health concern with healthcare staff when they need. One community member said that the dialogue was a direct and exciting conversation on one hand, client could say they need clearly. On the other hand, health provider have opportunity to review what they have done and uh, its limitation. Everybody then could contribute to improve quality of the service. CAP also provided an opportunity for client to recognize resolution of key issue by health provider. In one meeting of CSC, a client reported that he had the confidence to say a stigmatized experience in a recent visit to the participating health facility, leading to a very low score of sick. The identification of SND was taken seriously by site leadership and now was chosen for improvement. During weekly staff meeting, Lead the emphasize zero stigma and uh, consistently upheld this principle with health staff. As seen in the green cycle, in the next round, the score improved. Clients express their satisfaction with the commitment and action taken by the health facility to improve and also show the value of joint dialogue and sharing the opinion with facility. Finally, in the last two quarters, in uh, four provinces, CAP support to implement multiple strategies to ensure treatment continuity. During AIV insecurity, CAP work with site to remain open after normal working hour for clients who work in industrial zone and could not take time off to get their medication when they have to go in monthly, bi-weekly and even weekly in some cases. They can sell on social health insurance assets 
coverage and use especially for industrial zone clients who have term limited coverage or could not extend their insurance on time due to COVID-19. In cases where client could not leave to accept medication, CAP arranged with site for flexible service to allow family member or designate individual to pick up medication on their behalf. In some provinces, CAP have to deliver drug directly to client who were in a red zone or uh, not permitted to go out during social distancing period. During lockdown, some distance shut down the clinic temporarily. When this occurred, CAP member navigated a RV client to other clinic to uh, pick up the medication, guide them on procedure and what paper client need to so They also supported break client to assess the medicine and also provided referral to other provinces if needed. One client in Bình Dương province gratefully said that CAP guided me how to register temporarily in Kiên Giang province. Without their support, I would not know how to get AIV and maintain AIV adherence. Due to its obvious effectiveness, CAP model in Vietnam has a very quick evolution. As I mentioned, the first model was piloted in April 2019 and initiated in foresight only. Eight months later, it was expanded to another province with larger coverage, covering on site within the province. Over the last six months, CAP expanded to four more provinces. Together with province of CDC and province of CAP, we advocated successfully the Vietnam administration of HIVS control to develop a national guidance on CAP model. Hopefully, after uh, September this year, when the national guidance on CAP is issued officially, CAP model could be applied nationwide. Based on evidence gained from our model in Vietnam, we have some major recommendations. First, network and recruitment of CAP members from diversified KP and CPO are critical since experiences can be very different for various KP groups. Second, trust and understanding between health provider and client is crucial. Once health provider understand that client input and the process is about improvement, not blame, and all have open dialogue on the service issue they are motivated to improve. Third, building capacity for CAP members is important to ensure that they have enough skin on advocacy and communication. This how CAP work smoothly with healthcare workers, explain the situation and solution expectation from clients more clearly. Fourth, this model should be documented and said widely. Um, as it provided valuable input for the sector to respond well to clients' needs. And final, we should consider about sustainability. All CAP members are volunteer with no monthly salary. They have their own business or personal work. So it is very important to keep balance between our expectation and uh, the, the achievable result. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to send my sincere thanks to all provincial CDC facility, PECFA, US CDC, VAAC, my colleagues at IVM, provincial CAP, and especially all community members who have made this work possible. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much Lynn for a fantastic presentation uh, very inspiring we've got uh, just a couple of minutes for questions and I have two questions uh, that have come in so far so the first is um, a lot a lot of those changes 
um, that were recommended by the CABS um, would have required, I guess, some investment from the health system, some financing from the health system. Was this a big challenge? And how, how will you negotiate that going forward if there are a lot of requests made from the CAB that require additional investment from in, in the health system? And the second question is around um, telemedicine innovation and telemedicine. Are there opportunities there to improve access and quality of care amongst target population from using telemedicine and innovation? Uh, thank you, um, Kiran. Uh, it's very interesting question. Uh, uh, for the first question, investment from the government, government uh, and CDC. Um, frankly, uh, now we have support from PEPFA and USCDC, and um, so in this um, in this phase, uh, we can support um, financially for uh, the CAP model. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are advocated successfully the VAAC um, to issue national guidance, and we expected that. Uh, with, um, with the national guidance, each CDC and province uh, can allocate their financial from governmental budget for this. And um, um, actually, the financial support for CAP is very small. It's about uh, uh, 30 or, 50, uh, or, or $40 per month just for travel allowance. They uh, work as volunteer, voluntary, and they devoted more than because um, financial benefit. Yeah. And um, for the second question, so uh, so can you can you clarify it? The, the the question was around telemedicine, whether telemedicine or innovation could create opportunities for improving access and quality of care for the population groups? Uh, yes, uh, as I introduced you in the CAP model, because member of CAP is from people living with HIV or KP group. So they um, uh, expand, uh, they introduce you and uh, how to circulate the information about the initiative or about the available service to the network uh, is uh, contribute to improve uh, accessibility of KP group to the current service. And um, on the other side, um, when they assess the service, they have opportunity to say their needs, their expectation, and uh, so that the health system can respond well to, uh, to meet their needs. Okay, thanks. And just a, a final question before we wrap up. Um, were there any specific challenges that you faced regarding COVID-19 and lockdown where, where, where access could have been hampered? Uh, assess, sorry. Uh, were, there, were there any challenges that to, to access due to COVID-19 and lockdown? Yes. Uh, the client in uh, Vietnam, especially in the high burden uh, due to COVID-19 have very difficult to access service. Uh, that's why CAP work more uh, effectively. Um, they have, um, as I mentioned in the, uh, in the nearly last slide, uh, they had to deliver drugs for people who are in the lockdown area or uh, had to um, uh, provide more counseling, more support for the person uh, have difficult to assess uh, social health insurance uh, due to unemployment um, in COVID-19 period. 